Hey, everybody, what's up? You're watching The Sit Down. I'm DJ Sixsmith. We're hanging out with Paul Shear and Casey Wilson. Season three of Black Monday, new decade, new look. It's going to be a lot of fun on Showtime. What's going on? How are, how are you two doing? Good. Great. Yeah. Well, Happy really, to be here. I'm good. Listen, it's it's been a long, crazy pandemic. It's nice to have some new stuff to watch. So, Casey, why don't we start with you here? What has the experience of Black Monday been like, and how excited are you for folks to see the new season? It's been great. You know, we've been filming for a bit. Obviously, it's it's been wild filming during COVID, but we haven't luckily had any problems. And I think we still managed to create such a funny, great show. And I, I'm so excited for everyone to see the new show. It's so hard, funny. It has so many jokes and just laughs and great performances. And it's just such a weird, great tone. It's like part murder mystery this year and part there's still romance, but it's just genuinely so funny and out there that I, I, I want everyone to watch. Paul, how about for you, man? What's Keith up to and what should people be most excited about? You know, I think one of the cool things about the show is all the different directions it can take. Like Casey was saying, the show has like really hard jokes, but the stakes are important and the characters actually grow and are hurt. And when things happen, they they mean something. And uh, so that's really fun. And what I think the whole runner of this season is, is people trying to start a second life. Like what's their next chapter, but the past is creeping in. And in this season, literally with a body count, they are being hunted. Uh, there's a murder mystery happening throughout the season and bodies are dropping. Um, unlikely pairings are being formed and we are basically racing to this end to figure out which one of us might it be or is it somebody that we don't know who actually it is clearly a lot going on definitely gonna be yeah. checking this one out casey when you think about the beginning of this show i mean how crazy is it for you to see where it started to where it is now because it's like we've had a pandemic in the middle it was broken yeah. up a little bit what do you remember about just the beginning of everything here in terms of my character or just the show in general the show and your character both you know, it's so fun because my my husband uh, is one of the creators of the show along with Jordan Cahan. And so I remember this script existed like 10 years ago. So it's just been such an evolution to see it. And then, you know, when Don Cheadle signed on, this is like, Paul, when did we start this? Three years ago? Four? My gosh, a long, long time. Yeah, yeah about three years been, ago. Like, yeah, living with this show for such a long time. And it's so fun touching down with everyone in the cast every year. And personally, I've gotten to change hairstyles, which always feels fun. And I, I personally will just say like, I've just enjoyed more and more getting to play just such a wild character. You know, I'm abusive emotionally, physically, mentally. <laughs> and to just get to play someone off the walls and watch how the show is morphed in terms of starting out solely about Wall Street and kind of where we've been able to go. And so much life has been lived, obviously, like you said, a pandemic. So I'm just hoping to get comedy back in front of people that I think after this hard year will be hopefully very welcome. It was certainly welcome to film it during this hard time. Yeah, no question about it. Paul, you've been on a bunch of different shows. Why do you think this one resonates? You know, what's kind of the special sauce of this show in your opinion? You know, the writing is so incredibly strong. And I think you see that, uh, you know, people definitely tune in for these jokes. I will also kind of then turn it on the other side of the camera, which is, you know, I think this cast us. is one us. Yeah, I do think that this cast is one of the best casts. It's it just has a lot of people like you may be a Don Cheadle fan and you're just tuning in to see Don, but then you're like, oh my gosh, but I love Casey. And then, oh, but I love Regina, but oh, I like Paul. And like every one of the guest stars, every one of the main cast, every one of them have been you know, really put through a ringer in a, in a way. And, and Jordan and David have incredible taste and they really bring in the best people. So even in these uh, smaller parts, it's always somebody that you're like, oh my gosh, I love that person. So it really, I think if that's your entry point, just because you love, you know, Regina Hall, you're going to then kind of fall into the show. So I think that this is a really interesting cast. Yeah, it's a great way to put it, right? Is that people know who you are from your previous work and then each of you crush it on the show in your own individual way, which is really cool. And obviously having Don Cheadle certainly helps as well. So Casey, when you think about Don, what are some of your favorite stories around working with him? Well, Don is just so fun and he's so smart and I'm always bummed that I don't get to work with him more, but we did film a very brief scene <laughs> 
this this first episode, which made it into the trailer, and I read it, and I was a bit horrified. Essentially, my Don knocks on my character's door. I I open the door and have an orgasm. I mean, it was a wild <laughs> scene, the kind of which you think when you work with Don Cheadle, you'll get to do a bit, you know, higher brow material, but not in this case. And I just love working with Don. He's so easy to work with, and he really leads a big text chain with all of us. That is really funny and. He's just a great guy and I I don't know, I just feel very lucky to get to work with him and everyone. Paul, do you have a favorite Don Cheadle story so far? You know, I think what I love about Don is he is such a true like actor in the sense of the term yeah. that he really wants to inhabit this character. You feel like he's not making any false moves. And so I think in that first season, we all were just like, all right, let's, let Don kind of lead it and we can joke. Yeah, let's look alive. If, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then I think what has been so fun is that that quickly erodes and he really wants everyone to have like a looseness and a freshness and a fun. And, you know, I think one of the best parts of working with Don and, and Casey can speak to this too on Saturday when we were shooting, you know, because of COVID, we have to be very specifically placed in our in our cast chairs but even in that configuration it's just this conversation that can range from music to pop culture to uh, political issues it it's this like free-flowing conversation i think that that's one of the things i love about don is that he is there he is one of us i think he sees himself as uh just an actor even though he is such an accomplished uh you know actor in so many senses of the word but he's just there to kind of like have fun and goof around. And he has the coolest friends. So every now and then you'll hear a story and be like, wait, you were with what and doing what? <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. Like, you know, he played a track uh, off of his phone the other day from somebody that would blow your mind if you knew that he like played us a piece of new music from someone that is insane. And it's like, oh yeah, yeah. He just sent that to me. I'm like, oh, okay. okay, amazing. It's completely casual, right? Just Yes, no, it's not like he's not showing it off. It's like, this is kind of cool, right? Absolutely. I was like, yeah, that's amazing. That is pretty cool. <laughs> That's awesome. So another cool thing is that both of you went to NYU. Both of you were on the New York City comedy scene. When did you two first meet doing UCB and all that? Do you remember? I do. I remember. As a matter. Yeah. 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 Well, you go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. I, I'd like to hear. Yeah, you can. Let's hear your well, because We didn't know each other at NYU. Mm -hmm. And Paul and his current wife, June Diane Rayfield and I were in our kind of now, do people even say this phrase anymore, Paul, comedy partners? <laughs> I guess, yeah, I don't <laughs> even know. Falling away, writing partners. Yeah. But we started doing Upright Citizens Brigade Theater, and then we someone put us in touch with Paul and said, you know, maybe he can give you some notes on your show. And we were really nervous to meet Paul. We're like, I don't know if he would do this. Would he even help us? Would he want to? And so you met us at, I want to say, an X and O coffee shop. That's right. Yeah. I think it was even before it became X and O. I think it was still, oh, wait, was it? Wasn't it? Oh, maybe it was XML. Did it change names? I remember it was like maybe. one of those. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and we went and we were like trying to look presentable and look nice. And we were just so nervous. And we went and met Paul. And I mean, I'm sure the biggest takeaway when you look back on it, Paul, is that you met me and not your wife. Well, I, I, I tell this story very honestly that when I saw their show, which was amazingly funny and brought them to the Aspen Comedy Festival, which was really like the height of what you were achieving in comedy at that point. Uh, when I went backstage to say hi, Casey was absolutely uh, lovely and nice. And and I joked around with Casey and my my future wife totally gave me the hi hat. That uh, just ignored me uh, straight out. And so uh, that was that's really like my first memory. I was like, wow, I guess okay, cool. Uh, and, <laughs> you and still then, said you would come and do notes. <laughs> very nice. Yeah, but it was. I mean, I I think very similarly. UCB is a, um, a theater that really brings in people from all different backgrounds. Um, and everyone kind of is there for the grander scheme of like making just good shows and good comedy. And I think this show has a similar element here. Everyone, again, comes from very different backgrounds and supports and adds and plays with each other really well. And I think that that's, if anything that UCB has ever taught me, it really is that. It's just like, yeah, like all hands on deck at all points. Yeah. And Paul still gives me copious notes in our I scene. do, I do. And that's, and that, you know, and that like, sometimes I'll say, I'll text them to you because they are long, but you know, sometimes, I'll, sometimes just give a you'll voice say, I'll just read them in front of the crew, read them in front of everyone. That's and... fine. And I get the microphone because it's, you know, because of COVID, it does make it hard to hear things. Mm. So yeah, I'll just. Right. And it's, it's still happening all these years later. Absolutely. All these years. 
after this interview, I'll hear something. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be getting uh, a voice memo after this one, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the other cool thing is that, you know, from doing what you did on UCB, you both have been on really successful shows. And Casey, for you, happy endings over a decade ago. You know, people are, are tweeting about it and reliving it. I mean, did people find it in a new way during the pandemic? How did that go down? I think they did, to be honest. But I also think for whatever reason, you know, people either truly have never heard of this show or they've seen it and, and love it so much. And Paul was a guest star on it too. So it has this funny life to it where, you know, people have either seen it truly like four times through or not at all. But I do think during the pandemic, everyone was looking, at least I was, for like comfort viewing. Like I went back and rewatched Seinfeld I got back into girlfriends. I was like, what shows do I feel are comforting? And I think, so I think more people actually started to find it and it's also like on Hulu plug. So I think uh, people started finding it more too. Paul, yeah, how about to me, with the weed? Uh, you know, it's interesting. Nothing dies anymore, right? Like, it, like, and that's the best part of it because I think a lot of us feel really proud about some of the work that we got to do. And because of a million different reasons, maybe like I always joke around, like I always am on a network that is hard for people to figure out where it is. Me so too. it's like, yeah. It's never it's like, like Netflix. <laughs> right. It's like, always how like, do well, I no. get to it? <laughs> what is that? Like, I mean, the, the biggest joke of it always was like, I was like, oh, I, I have a show on Adult Swim. Well, I don't know if I get Adult Swim. Actually, you do. It's called Cartoon Network. All right, so it's on Cartoon Network? No, no, no. Well, yes, technically it is Cartoon Network, but at 10 p.m. it becomes Adult Swim. <laughs> oh, well, what time is it on? Oh, 12.15. 12.15? Yeah, it's a 15-minute show. Like, so you're I'm always constantly, you up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think now with these streamers, if you've ever heard about something and because the algorithms are smarter than we could ever be, all of a sudden you like, if you like this, you like that. And then all the, you start to find these things. So the league has been one of those shows uh, that truly, you know, just continues to have a life of its own. And I think that people uh, live them because I think comedy does have a lot more legs than anything else. Like it doesn't feel old, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it ages well, I think for the most part. Yeah, I would agree with that. And like you said, it's just nice to relive your favorite TV shows and also catch up on stuff you never saw. Right. I think that's, yeah. the beauty of what I mean, look, I think that that's what happened with Schitt's Creek. I watched all of Schitt's Me Creek too. during the pandemic. And I you feel and like I were like the only people that had never seen. I it. know. Yeah. I know. And it was like, it was so fun to know that because Casey was ahead of me and I was able to like, be like, Oh my gosh. And this and that, like, it's like, yeah, like it, but it I know is. People were like, like, no, we saw it, but we had yeah. each other at least. We had seven years to watch the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. It's like a hit show like that, right? It gets onto Netflix. People find it. People can watch it whenever. And then people have the same reaction where it's like, yeah, I don't understand the comedic tone at first, but then they get into it. And I'm sure it's, you know, same with shows that you both have been on where it's like, sometimes it takes a little bit longer to get into it before it becomes. Yeah. And well, that's what I like about certain shows you have to drop into where you're like, oh, I have to adjust to this tone. This is a very different idea and fresh. And it's interesting uh, only to go back to happy endings to say this, I do think black Monday, while it is a wildly different show than happy endings, it shares a sensibility because people are always like, oh, they seem so different. I'm like, actually, it has just fast paced, hard humor. I think that Black Monday is much more complex, much more complex with complex characters that people care about. But I think it's, I'm only saying that because people are always like, oh, are they similar? Are they different? And I'm, you know, it is similar creative staff. So well, they I, have I think it's the style of jokes. I think, you know, yeah. uh, David and Jordan who created the show, uh, they really have, a style of joke writing that is incredibly unique. And I think a lot of it is in a turn of phrase. And it's like, uh, I would be as lofty to say it is as tricky to nail as Aaron Sorkin in the sense that if one word is off, the joke doesn't work. And it really plays with patter. And it, uh, like in Casey's book, you know, you, you kind of uh, diagram this one joke about uh, if like Steven Tyler, uh, Stephen Perry got married. Like it's like it's it gets so the wording is so specific that you have to nail it. So I think for all of us, the show is so fun and it's so fresh. But we there is a panic going on, and you see us all pacing before a take, <laughs> looking panic. over these lines because you have to go like, oh, no, I have to say I've always been thinking about. So when Andrew comes in, he goes, I've always been thinking. Of, we all have to say it the exact same way because the joke only works when all four of us say it the same way back to back. So it's like in that I way- I always pray I'm on the B side of that where I hear the oh, first person too. set it up and I just repeat it back. Cause it's- It's, it's hard to be the first person, right? Yeah, it's really yeah. difficult, but it's but it's incredibly fun. And I think that's what gives the show this kind of crazy energy. And then I've always said like, the show is kind of a, 
uh, a, it's like, it's kind of like Breaking Bad meets Happy Endings because the stakes are real. It continues, these characters grow, they change, but the jokes are really incredibly solid. Uh, Paul just mentioned your book, Casey. I wanted to ask you about that. What was it like putting that out there? You hit a bunch of different topics. It was really vulnerable. You know, what was most interesting about the experience for you? It was a great experience. Um, you know, like Paul was saying, we've both been doing this business for a long time and in different mediums and writing scripts and TV. And it just frankly gets very frustrating over the course of your career, just get so many notes and input and, you know, so many people are responsible for every, everything you do now that, I just love the freedom of just getting to write what I wanted to and the book industry is very, it's a different pace. And I just had so much fun just kind of telling my story and it's for better or worse, it is mine. If people don't like it, then I don't want them to blame me, but they probably will. But I don't know, I just like the freedom of it. Similarly with podcasting, um, which Paul got me actually into doing the podcast I do. It's just fun to put out creative creativity and it's not that deep and you get to put your own voice out there. and. But more than that, I was so happy to be able to tell stories about my parents and kind of bring my mom into people's lives, even though she's passed away. And so it was just totally different, different animal in a really great way. That's awesome to hear. I'll yeah, I, I'll just to, to just jump on that. I think that coming up through the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater, we were primarily creating disposable comedy. You know, it was that theater is based in improv. So you, that's a show that exists for one time, for one audience and one time slot. You don't even do it twice a night. No two shows are the same. And this idea that you're there for this kind of special moment, I think we're all chasing that, like that, uh, that ability to feel loose and fresh and fun. And, you know, because we are under such structure. So with podcasting, I would say that there's that that energy there. It's disposable. Not to say that it's not worthy of your time, but it's like once it's done, it's done. Like you know, and it, and and there's a. I think we're always trying to find that, and I think that you know, good sets are like that as well. Like on this set on Happy Endings, we are you know, David and Jordan are very proud to say that they give us autonomy of our characters, so we can go to them and go. I don't feel like my character would do this, but they're also building these amazing scripts and plots. So it's like, it's a really, it's not even a delicate balance. It's actually a very collaborative balance where they are creating for us these amazing worlds and the way we want to get there with maybe a character or the way we kind of shave an edge off is it brings you back to that. Like you have some, that you have some control, which is again, a rare thing to do. At the league, we had yeah. tremendous, you know, freedom, which was a, the, the most, un, you know, that's the, the most unique thing I've ever done. Paul, you have no control over how the Clippers are going to do, though. So how you feeling? I, I don't. I feel very season? good. I feel very good about these Clippers. You know, I don't want to jinx anything, obviously, uh, but we feel good. I feel like Ty Lue is doing some great stuff. I'm not worried about these losses here at the end. We're healthy. And uh, I, I hate that I just said we, but uh, <laughs> but I will. But uh, You're not on yeah, the team. I'm not on the team. I am not on the team. I Look, I would love to. Uh, I just submitted myself to be a cardboard cutout in the stands for the playoffs. Uh, so, I tried you know, to get my husband that for Hanukkah. I was like, how can I get him in for a what team, Casey? Uh, for, well, the God, he likes the Clippers too, the Bulls, but mainly yeah. the Bulls. I That's tried ever. It was just too complicated. I gave up very quickly. I was like, <laughs> I can't get him in the cardboard. And <laughs> I, I, right before the pandemic hit, I was very close to getting a Black Monday Clippers night. Uh, and I was very, cause our show pretty much premiered the week after the pandemic started last March. It was so it was a, yeah, it was a wild, wild night. Well, Paul, Casey, looking forward to season three. Thanks for hanging out and we'll Thank talk you. to you both down the road. All right. Yeah, bye. Bye. A lot.